So here we are at Depurua. You can see in the background here the slash logs that come up. They, they actually come from the Waipu River and float around here and cause damage. So we've got the coastal erosion happening. Uh, we've got the erosion from the river which has threatened our marae. Trees are cut and they're growing again and they're cut and they're growing again and it's just taking the land away. It's just a mess. It's a mess. The higher temperatures from climate change, what they're going to bring, more storms, and, and what impact is that going to have on the whenua, how well prepared are we? With climate change, erosion is going to worsen by about 41%, and that has huge impacts for Te Tairawhiti. Particularly with respect to our current land use is primarily still in sheep and beef, so there's a requirement to actually start thinking about shifting current land use from sheep and beef into indigenous afforestation options. The project is a team effort, it's a collaborative effort amongst a number of uh, science institutions, CRIs, Crown Research Institutions and Iwi and Apu. What made this project stand out probably from a lot of other science projects that take place is that we put our values first in terms of okay we know that afforestation is the way forward for us so that we are able to grow an economy and grow our natural resources, our natural capital, but also create jobs and livelihoods for, for our people, for our communities. But we want to make sure that we're doing it in a way that stems from Te Ao Māori. What Māori land is we're keen on, we're about trying to realise benefits that are intergenerational. Changing practice away from short-term gain, particularly with regard to how we are carrying out forestry at the moment. Landowners, they want to be able to grow food, so we looked at options such as nut trees, olives, avocados, macadamia. There's a big demand for products such as manuka honey, as well as the oils from various trees like tōtara, particularly within the pharmaceutical space, nutraceutical space, and I think there's big opportunities there. And those types of opportunities that resonate with more of a long-term thinking, with that intergenerational thinking, overlaps with the concept of kaitiakitanga, which is about sustainable resource management. Now I have fruit trees that I grew 20, 30 years ago and they're still there and they're feeding us. You know, can't people see we need to grow trees that are going to be there forever and look after us? Do we have to keep making money off the forestry to survive? Sheep and beef is part and parcel of the identity of Te Tairawhiti. So I think there's going to be some long conversations required in order to figure out what are the best ways to transition over to planting trees. It's trying to get more specific get a suite of land uses that meets all of our collective aspirations. In the past I think our forebears have only been able to have, you know, oh we've got to be farming or we've got to be forestry. Another key finding from the project was that when you did try and plant trees and did receive benefits, whether it was a subsidy from the Erosion Control Funding Program coupled with return from honey, the benefits from that type of activity was more than current sheep and beef activity. Generally with investments, we primarily focus on how much we're going to make in the next two to three years. However, with climate change and looking at investment opportunities that mitigate the impacts from climate change, those benefits aren't received until far off into the future. So while we as current generations might not receive those benefits, those benefits are going to be received by our future generations. So that means that we need to change our priorities around these types of investments and value future generations just as much as we value ourselves.